Not yet. Mr. Not Reed. yet. Can try to reshare it again. All right, perfect. Okay. Okay, so uh, in this moment, I will uh, discuss related to battery regulation and standardizations. Uh, okay. Uh, in this uh, presentations, uh, what I want to discuss is first uh, to know the definitions about these standards and then uh, why standards are important to us. And then uh, we, we will know the lithium battery failure uh, and also the standards uh, related to the lithium battery uh, problem in the uh, consumer uh, products and also the performance and safety testings. Uh, what kind of uh, testings to, uh, to uh, comply its standards in international standards and also the regulation uh, related lithium battery, uh, especially in Indonesia uh, with uh, SNE, uh, National Standard uh, Indonesia. So uh, what is standards? In, uh, in, uh, in a regular, uh, Definitions, standards is uh, requirements, specifications, guidelines, or characteristics that can be used by, uh, consistently to ensure that materials, products, process, and services are safe to use uh, and fit for their purposes. But in, uh, in our country, uh, the definition of standards according to Constitution Act number 20, year 2014, Standards is a uh, technical requirements or something that is dedicated, including the manners and methods that are structured based on consensus by all parties or governments or international decisions related to considering safety requirements, security, health, environment, development of science and technology, experience, and present and future developments to obtain the greatest benefits. So uh, our country already uh, defined what standards. Uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, definition inside the uh, Constitution Act. Uh, the most uh, questions, uh, why standards are important to us? The first, uh, uh, probably ensure that your products are safe and according to uh, legal requirements and saving time and money with travel tests because standards uh, to do the standards your product needs need to be tested and it will cost you uh, uh, money and the from the business view uh, it can stay ahead of competitors by accessing new global market faster. Uh, so uh, another standardization object uh, objectives when we need uh, to improve the quality insure, uh, quality assurance and production efficiency and national competitiveness. And also the uh, we want to improve the protection to consumers, uh, business actors, workers, and other communities, as well as the, the state, uh, the state both in terms of safety, security, health, as well as the uh, preservations of environmental functions. And also uh, improve the certainty, smoothness, and efficiency of trade. This is from the uh, business view, uh, the transaction of goods and services at home and abroad. Uh, right now, uh, we will talk about the uh, how lithium battery fail. So, uh, the common uh, 
environment the common hazard in this uh, battery there are uh, four uh, possibility of uh, hazard the first one is uh, thermal stability and the second one is energetic decomposition electrolyte flammability and intolerance of abuse so uh, thermal stability means the battery are sensitive to the higher temperatures higher temperatures mean uh, it can lower the uh, the performance itself and it can be dangerous uh, to the user so uh, and then the energetic decomposition mean the battery have the uh, housing the stainless steel housing that can uh it can uh, explode at any time that can also harmful to the uh, user the third one is the electrolyte permeability the electrolyte of the battery is uh, commonly used is the lipf6 uh, it can uh instantaneous uh, uh flammable when it uh when it gets to the oxygen oxygens uh in the air and also the intolerance of abuse. So the battery is sensitive to puncture. So uh, if you have a battery products, uh, don't ever, uh, don't even uh, uh, crash or uh, uh, puncture uh, your battery uh, with a sharp objects. Uh, it can uh, uh, it can short the battery uh, at any time. Uh, it's very dangerous. So uh, we need to know the uh, fundamentals about it. Uh, the thermal runaway is the uh, uh, the battery are uh, have the four main uh, parts. The first one is cathode, the second one is anode, and then separator and the electrolyte. Cathode is the uh, positive terminal of the battery, uh, typically from a lithium metal oxide. And then the anode is the negative terminal, is typically a graphite. And then the separator uh, is a polymer uh, a sheet uh, similar to uh, the polypropylene or something like, uh, something like that. And then the electrolyte is a solvent uh, containing conductive salts that permit the flow of ionic uh, charge. So how the battery can uh, fail, especially explode or uh, catching fire. So the thermal runaway is uh, triggered by uh, the internal problem, like uh, maybe the separator break or uh, wear down, uh, and then it can make uh, the anode and the cathode uh, short uh, or or touch each other. So it it makes uh, it happen it. Uh, short circuit happen, and then uh, it when it when it touch each other, uh, it producing tremendous thermal energy. Uh, probably uh, it can reach uh, seven hundred degrees Celsius in just a one minute uh, from the uh, from the short circuit itself. And then after uh, the high thermal energy, the electrolyte is break down to um, methane, ethan, uh, carbon monoxide, and also the hydrogen gas. After that, uh, the cathode also decomposes uh, because the cathode is a uh, lithium metal oxide. It, uh, it, uh, it has uh, oxygen uh, inside the materials. So uh, with the pressure built, the pressure built inside, uh, we already have uh, the triangle of fire, the fuel, the oxygen, and the heat, and uh, it can make the battery explode uh, when it uh, already have the enough energy to uh, explode itself. And then uh, lithium battery standards. Uh, uh, in the in the worldwide, uh, we already know the there's a lot of standards, but the common standards for the battery products there are uh, UL and IEC. Uh, UL uh, stands for Underwriters uh, Laboratory. 
this is the one of the oldest safety certifications company around uh, is for the North American uh, area. And then the IC is from the uh, Europe. And then uh, the IC standard uh, uh, and also the UL uh, has uh, differ significantly. The IC standard specify, specify the minimum device safety requirements, but in the UL standard uh, specify comprehensive technical details in terms of product safety and applications. So what uh, standards in the battery? Uh, I will divide the standards into the uh, into two standards. The first one is performance testing. Uh, for the UL, uh, the lithium cell is uh, complied by the UL 1642 standards. And for the nickel cell or lithium nickel packs, UL 2054. And for the standby batteries, for the uh, like the UPS, uh, UL 1989. And then uh, for the IEC, IEC 61960 for the performance of rechargeable lithium, uh, especially for the uh, portable applications. Uh, and then the IEC 61960-3 year 2017 is for the price, uh, the prismatic and cylindrical lithium secondary cells uh, and other battery made from them. So this is for the performance testings. Uh, for uh, for the safety test, uh, UL 9540A for the fire safety hazard with propagating thermal runway within battery systems. And also the IEC 62133-1 year 2017 is regulate the uh, safety requirement for the nickel battery. Uh, and then there are uh, 62619 6, 62, 6, 6, 2017 uh, safety requirement for the secondary lithium cell batteries for industrial applications. So the standard uh, are uh, it depends on what uh, your final product is. Uh, it is for the industrial or the uh, for the electric vehicles or the uh, portable applications. It has uh, different standards. Uh, in this uh, presentation, I will focus on the IEC 62133-1 for the uh, nickel battery cell and also the uh, UN.38.3, UN dot means the, the standards from the United Nations uh, and Department of Transportation. Uh, this is the uh, special standards for transportation. Uh, it means uh, when you shipping or you send your uh, battery or battery products uh, to ensure the safety uh, in the uh, packaging or the uh, shaping process. <clears throat> and then uh, performance and safety testings. Uh, there are a lot of uh, battery performance testing. Uh, uh, the parameters is uh, a lot of uh, we can do in the uh, testings. In National Battery Institute, uh, we already uh, do the testings from the pre-charge information, uh, charge and discharge, direct current internal resistance or the CIR uh, measurement, and also the high rate test and cycle test. Uh, we can do that uh, until the uh, 100 volt and 100 amps. Also the uh, other the battery safety testings uh, to supporting the uh, standard certifications, we need to do the uh, safety testings. Uh, there are uh, altitude simulation test, thermal test, vibration test, shock test, external short circuit test, impact and crash test, overcharge and post-discharge test. 
So uh, this uh, parameters, uh, it uh, depends on what standards you want to uh, certify. Uh, there, uh, there are significant uh, difference between its standards. Uh, so uh, we need to know first about the what standard is. Okay, uh, in this um, standards IEC six two one three three, the uh, first testing uh, we do is uh, low rate continuous charging. Uh, what does it mean? So it to fully charged cells are subjected for charging for. 28 days long and uh, and the current is specified by the already specified uh, from the manufacturer. I know there are also a vibration test. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is more technical. Uh, fully charged cells or batteries are vibration tested under the following test conditions and the sequence uh, like a simple harmonic motions is applied to the cell or batteries with an amplitude of 0.76 and a total maximum excursion is 1.52 millimeters. Uh, it plays the frequency uh, 1 hertz per minute between 10 hertz and 55 hertz. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, specification that I need to do. Uh, like uh, this traverse in 90 minutes, or uh, we need to change the positions uh, uh, of the mounting positions. Uh, uh, typically, the vibration test has a uh, three axis uh, uh, movement. So uh, it will uh, test it in uh, three times uh, with each uh, direction. And then the other uh, testing is uh, temperature cycling. It means the it is the subject of uh, or, or your battery uh, repeated exposure to high and low temperature uh, and shall not cause fire or explosions. And then uh, there are external source circuit. Uh, your battery is uh, uh, is a source circuited by connecting the positive and, and negative terminals with a total external resistance of less than 100 uh, milliohms. And the cells or batteries remain on test for 24 hours or until the case temperature declined by 20% of the maximum temperature rise. And then uh, there's a free fall. It's fully charged seal cell or battery is dropped three times from uh, the height of one meters into the concrete or the floor. The cells or batteries are dropped so as to obtain the impact in a uh, random orientation. And uh, different uh, with the mechanical shock, mechanical shock is, uh, is applied in each of three mutually perpendicular directions, maybe from the uh, front, side, or back. At least uh, one of them shall be perpendicular to a flat face. And then uh, in the mechanical shocks, uh, it used the mounting, uh, mounting surface to hold the uh, your samples or battery. And then uh, the battery is subjected to a three shock of equal magnitude. And then there are uh, low pressure tests. Uh, it will uh, simulate the, uh, uh, like in the uh, vacuum uh, conditions uh, with the vacuum chamber. Also, the temperature is controlled in the uh, 20 degrees Celsius. And once the chamber has been sealed, its internal pressure is gradually reduced to a pressure equal to 11.6 kilopascal. And this simulates an altitude of 15,000 uh, meters uh, above the sea level and will be held at the value of six hours uh, long. And then uh, there are overcharging. The cell is discharged as described in 
uh, another standards and IC 61960 uh, then charge it from a power supply with a 10 volts at the charging current of a recommended uh, current so we can see the uh, how much current we will use is from the manufacturer itself so uh, maybe uh, we can use a 1c rate or a half c rate it depends on the uh, data set uh, from the manufacturer <coughs> <coughs> so all the uh, the tests uh, uh, will be declared as a uh, pass uh, uh, pass the test. What is the requirement? It is a uh, all of the above tests must meet the requirement of no breakage or no fire and no explosions. If any of these conditions are, are present, it is considered to have a failed a failed test, and you need to retest again from the uh, first one. So regulation uh, related to uh, lithium battery. Uh, as we know, the lithium battery, uh, lithium battery or lithium ion battery uh, as classified as the uh, class nine dangerous goods. Uh, from the uh, dangerous goods are classified to the nine hazard. The first one is explosives, second gases, flammable liquids, flammable solids, oxidizer, uh, it is poisons, radioactive, corrosive, and miscellaneous. So the battery is classified as the class nine because uh, this class uh, uh, it can uh, uh, it can trigger all of the another hazard like it can explosive, it can gas, it can uh, flammable liquids. All of the uh, hazards are uh, combined uh, in this uh, in this class. Uh, and then uh, for classifying the lithium battery, uh, the UN battery design uh, the uh, label for uh, for the packaging the battery uh, products like the uh, the presence of uh, hazard during transportations uh, uh, this is the class 9 uh, material but the uh, label for uh, different products like uh, if we have uh, the lithium metal batteries the the shipping needs to label the un 3090 and then uh, if we have the uh, equipment with the lithium batteries uh, like uh, laptops or smartphones, uh, it needs to be the level of UN 3091 or 3481 for the lithium ion. Uh, and then the lithium ion, if it's just the lithium ion batteries, uh, the label should be UN 3480. So, how does it look? Uh, this is the shipping uh, regulations uh, that are uh, controlled by. Uh, the uh, the IATA and UNECE. So uh, if the package uh, contain battery, uh, it only be uh, carried by cargo aircraft only. And also uh, the package needs to be labeled uh, specifically for what type of battery product inside. And then uh, the another regulations. Uh, that need to be uh, comply is UN 38.3 for the transportations. The uh, the, sub, the samples need to be tested in the uh, eight uh, parameters. Uh, we call it uh, T1 to T5, test number one until test number five. Uh, it can be used the same samples, uh, but uh, need to test it in order. Uh, the first one is LT2 simulations and then thermal test, and then vibration, and then shock, and the final one is extra source uh, uh, How about the T6 and, and T8? T6 and T8 is a uh, categorized as a uh, destructive test. So uh, we need to do the test just the cells only, not the whole, uh, the whole products. 
impact and crush, uh, and then the overcharge and force discharge. This is for the UN 38.3. For the details, uh, for the details uh, about the testings, uh, it can be downloaded the uh, the document uh, about the 38.3. There are uh, a lot of parameters need to be done in the testings. So uh, what the uh, uh, the UN 38.3 is uh, separate from the electrical safety testings, uh, and then uh, the part of dangerous goods regulations because uh, it control the shipments, not the uh, the use uh, the usage of the products. So the tests are not harmonized to IEC or UL standards uh, because uh, this yeah. Uh, this regulation control the, the shipment process of the uh, lithium battery products. And right now, uh, the regulation in, uh, in Indonesia, uh, we have uh, SNI, Standard National Indonesia, or Indonesian National Standard. Uh, it, uh, it's controlled by the uh, Badan Standard National, BSN, or National Standards Body. So, uh, uh, what is the SNI development process? The first one is uh, national need. There are all national need, uh, maybe from stakeholder, including society. Uh, uh, they make the proposal of SNI program, and then uh, the, BS, the BSN uh, make make the program. And then uh, uh, it has uh, the formulation uh, by a technical committee. They make uh, the SNI draft, and all, uh, after that, uh, it will be uh, do the survey by the stakeholder, uh, and then the final one is the uh, SNI determination by BSN. So the real SNI already uh, published, and uh, it, uh, it will not forget to reassessment by the technical committee uh, within five years. So uh, the formulation of SNI it, uh, in the uh, uh, previously I stated the, uh, the Constitute Act number ten. Uh, the formulation of SNI is SNI is formulated with regard to the availability of resource, national interest, research result, innovation, and experience. And the second one is in the event that there are international standards, SNI is formulated in accordance with international standards through first one is adoption of international standards, taking into account the national interest to confront global trade, or uh, they can modify modifications of international standards uh, to different uh, in maybe in a climate environment geology, geography, technological capabilities, and other specific conditions uh, related to our country itself. And the last is in the national interest, SNI may be formulated incompatible with international standards because they already uh, have to modify uh, from the original one. So it's not incompatible anymore with the international standards. For the lithium battery, the SNI standards, uh, uh, the popular one is the SNI 8785 year 2019 uh, for the safety in our power bank use. And then the SNI IEC 62660-1 for the cell performance in electric vehicle. And the SNI IEC 62660-3 for the safety aspect of the uh, electric uh, for battery in electric vehicle. So maybe that's for me. Uh, I will give it back to uh, MC.